how many of us have folders full of this type of stuff? No, I don't mean modern disco songs. I mean how many of us have folders full of 8-bar ideas. No matter how great the ideas are, they will likely languish in that folder until they become songs. And becoming songs usually means vocals. One of the reasons I think we all avoid vocals is because it's harder to make vocals sound polished in our mixes than, say, combinators and synth presets that load up in the reason rack sounding great from the start. Mixing vocals to fit within the rest of this mix takes a little work, a little faith when it starts out sounding not as great, and a few special tricks that I'll be teaching you today. Another main reason we avoid vocals in our songs is that we just aren't connected to vocalists. Fortunately, Ali Hoopa is full of people around the world who want to collaborate with you. So now, finding a vocalist you might want to work with is as simple as a trip to the search bar. For this song, I wanted to write the vocal myself, but then have my friend Angelo sing it for me. This is my original guide vocal that I sent to Angelo so he could learn the words and the melody. Get on! Let's drop the beat bomb, dead on. But look, I'm sharing this temp version to show you that it's okay if your vocal workflow starts out not sounding completely professional. Because believe me, this doesn't. I asked Angelo to record his vocal twice, a process called doubling. Doubling lead vocals often makes a vocal sound thicker and more lively. So here's what I got back from Angelo. Get on. Let's drop the paper. Here is where mix technique comes into play. I'll be using some rack extensions, which are all available in the Mix and Mastering Rig 2 from the Propellerhead shop. Many of us probably know the basics for a vocal, right? We want to compress the vocals, maybe tighten up the tuning, put on some reverb, maybe delay. But for vocal mixing, each of these topics requires more nuance. Let's start with compression. Read any forum or watch many YouTube videos, and they'll all tell you the way to get extra volume out of your vocals is to slap a compressor on it. And in a lot of ways, they're right. A compressor works by setting a volume threshold that you consider too loud, and telling the compressor how aggressively to turn those loud parts down. Once you set it up to your liking, the compressor operates automatically, turning the loud parts of your audio down to match the quiet parts, letting you turn the output back up and raise the overall perceived volume. This is referred to as downward compression, and compressors work great, that is, until they don't. For one thing, they color your sound. You can often hear them working, which can be a good thing or a bad thing if what you're looking for is transparent volume leveling. That's why for vocals like this, I like to do what's called upward compression, and I do it manually right in the sequencer. But I'll say this up front, this is an exacting and repetitive process. If, like me, you derive a sense of achievement from cleaning the roller brushes of your vacuum cleaner, you'll love this task. If you don't, then there's a fantastic rack extension by Selig Audio called the Selig Leveler, which does a very similar technique of upward compression and sounds great. But to do it manually, I turn off snap and set a razor mark on every section of my audio. For this vocal, that means basically every word. Then, one by one, I adjust the clip volumes in the sequencer, turning each one up to maximize its volume. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm a huge advocate of mixing with your ears and not with your eyes. But for this process, even I use my eyes. With my sequencer waveform height set to the default middle position, I'm simply raising each clip up to its ceiling. If some portions of your waveform go a bit above the ceiling, that's not the end of the world. What I'm primarily concerned with is creating a clip-to-clip -clip contour so that everything has a similar-looking general amplitude. After I've adjusted all the clips in a phrase, I select the clips, join them together, and double-click the joined clip to enter comp mode. To make sure there are no clicks or pops when going from clip-to-clip, -clip, I shift-select all of the clip separators and add a little bit of a crossfade. Now, I bounce the clips to a new single audio file and close out of comp mode. If I want to, I can double-click the bounced clip and make any adjustments to Angelo's timing. For a crisp, rhythmic song like this, I usually quantize the vocal quite a bit. We've done the first couple of lines of the vocal. Get on. Let's drop the beat bomb. Get on. The next step is to do it for the rest of the vocal, but it's the same process over and over again. So let's save some time through the power of cheesy video transitions. There we go. 
below that, we still have our original vocal double, and you can see how much quieter and uneven the volume peaks are. And yes, that means we need to do the same process to that audio. And yes, that means I get to use another cheesy video transition. Okay, next up, pitch. I'm going to add Neptune pitch adjusters to both vocal tracks. For the first, and maybe we could call it main vocal, I'm going to set up Neptune in the key of our song, which is D sharp minor. I'll dial the correction speed back for a slower, more natural sound. For the Neptune on Angelo's double track, I'm going to take the opposite approach. I'll still set it to D sharp minor, but I'm going to crank the correction speed all the way up for some very robotic sounding overtuning. And now the DJ's got us where we wanna go. Them three or three songs. But when we put these two vocals together, Get on. the natural settings overpower the robotic settings to our ears. Let's drop the beat bomb. Get on. But we still perceive the crisp perfection of the fast tuning. And now the DJ's got Chicago records on. Now that I've got both channels working for me, I'll select them in my mixer and route them to a new group channel by choosing New Output Bus. And I'll name that group channel Vocals. Or, if we're feeling cooler, we'll call it Vox. We can now treat our doubled vocal like one signal and apply classic vocal inserts and effects, like compression. Yes, compression. I know we just spent a few minutes talking about the alternatives to compressors, but they can be wonderful at adding color to your vocals, even if those vocals were already leveled using upwards compression. When it comes to coloring vocals with some lovely vintage compression, my personal first choice is the RE2A. The default patch is already optimized for vocals, so all I have to do is dial back the peak reduction knob so it's not over-compressing. Have you ever struggled with putting reverb on vocals where you just can't find a balance between too much reverb and too little reverb? Well, I mean, who hasn't? If you set your reverb level to wrap your mid-range voice in a nice, luscious ambience, you'll probably find that all the high-end elements of the voice, the sibilant st and ch sounds, cause the reverb to sizzle and overreact. If you turn your reverb down until that sizzle is under control, well, suddenly your mid-range voice isn't bathed in a nice reverb anymore. That's why I include an extra device in my vocal effects chain. While holding down the shift key, I'll drag a Selig de-esser into the rack and press the tab key to flip around to the back and wire it. I'll change my wiring so that the send cables going from Reason's mixer to the input of my reverb will instead go to the Selig de-esser first and then into the reverb. By passing my signal through a de-esser on its way to the reverb and cranking up the reduction knob, I'm able to tame those sibilant frequencies. Start the deck and let's kick it. The final thing I do for reverb is choose a good preset. I have two new favorite presets that I've been using ever since the RV7000 Mark II arrived in the Reason Rack, Vox Stay Clear and Vox Subtle Plate. For this song, the more shimmering quality of Stay Clear is what I'm after. Start the deck and let's kick it, Reason, to dig it, mash it up and remix it down and low. You can now hear that our reverb is very audible, but there's no sizzle, which helps our vocal sound both lush and affected but dry and clear at the same time. And now the DJ's got us where we wanna go. Them three or three songs. On a track like this, I'll usually put some delay on the voice as well. Let's activate the delay that I have on send number three and load a factory preset. Two against four. And now the DJ's got Chicago records on. Right away, you might be having flashbacks to your own mix nightmares. Just like the reverb, we're faced with either turning it down until you can't really hear it, which defeats the purpose, or leaving it up and losing clarity. So instead, let's make two important fixes. Let's activate the filter on the echo and thin out the sound of the delay. Get on. And now, let's deactivate its send button in the mixer. And, holding down the Option key on a Mac or Alt on Windows, let's click the Send button to create an automation lane in the sequencer. Instead of having my delay active at all times and using the ducking knob on the echo to try and keep it from fighting my vocal, I'm going to instead choose a few key places to activate the Send to the delay for a more selective effect. Get on! Let's drop the beat bomb! Get on! The night don't kick off till the dawn. 
So let's see how this vocal sits in our mix now. Keep in mind, in all this time, we haven't made any changes to the rest of our mix. Listen to how our vocal now pops out above everything else. Get on. Let's drop the beat, bro. Get on. That is a world of difference from where we started. Our doubled vocals gel together now to make one sound. Our dynamics are leveled out, the pitch is crisp but natural, reverb is present but not overpowering, and delay is used sparingly to enhance, not complicate, the performance. So, take what you've seen here and try it for yourself. If you haven't done so, Try writing a vocal. And if you don't sing yourself, look for vocalists on Ali Hoopa that you want to collaborate with. Vocalists are out there, and they want songs to sing on just as badly as you want vocals on your beats. It is a perfect pairing, like peanut butter and chocolate. Or for my propeller head friends in Sweden, like pickled fish and mustard. Ugh, what is wrong with you people? Anyway, good luck to you, and I hope to hear some of your eight bar loops turning into songs very soon. Get on. Let's drop the beat, bro. 